How badly do you want to know your own nature? If you want to become an NBA player, if you want to become a violinist, if you want to become a grandmaster in chess, how many hours a week do you think you need to dedicate yourself to that? Do you think you can become an NBA player or a world-class violinist or a grandmaster chess player if you dedicate yourself five hours a week to the craft? If you read a couple pages of a book or a couple hours of a video every single week, if you pursue entrepreneurship half acidly, will you actually execute your idea? Everyone and their mother knows that anyone pursuing entrepreneurship part-time is significantly less likely to succeed. It's the same exact case with enlightenment. You have to pursue this full time. Earnestness is key. That seeking impulse is the truest thing about you, period. Period. It's the absolute GPS callback for you to know yourself. The entire point of this reality is for you to venture outward just for you to recognize your true nature by venturing back inward. That's the entire point of this. You go outward, you venture, you venture, you seek happiness, you seek peace outside of yourself as a separate entity over and over, believing that you're a person, believing that this is real, that this is not a dream, and you do that more and more just to turn inward and wonder, what the fuck is consciousness? What the fuck is awareness? Am I infinite? Is my awareness shared and eternal with everyone? Is this one of our dreams? Am I the absolute? Am I God? Am I the highest? Am I the ultimate? Am I the supreme? Is this just an expression? Is this just a secretion of that? And boom, that's when it kicks in. That's the seeking impulse. To know thyself as that is the entire point of the reality. To dive into that with earnestness is the entire point of the reality. And guess what happens? As you dive into that, more and more, just like if you're striving to become an NBA player or if you're striving to become the world-class violinist or a grandmaster in chess, guess what happens? The more you dedicate yourself to it truly, earnestly, full-time, with passion and vigor and desire for you to know yourself, the more you will literally eradicate your own suffering and maximize the prosperity of yourself and the entire planet. That is the utility of it. It's like cultivating a garden. You can't just expect to water a little bit every single week and not care too much about the sunlight and not really care for the soil too much. You have to constantly be plucking out the weeds. You have to constantly be managing the soil, managing the sunlight, watering the seed, giving it love and compassion. You have to seek with such earnestness, with such immovable, impenetrable desire for you to know yourself that you actually make the truth yield. Truth will only yield with the utmost earnestness to know thyself. But most people don't want the truth to yield because it dissolves their ego. It dissolves their identity as a separate entity.
the dissolving of the person is the most beautiful thing there is. There's nothing more beautiful than knowing your true nature. It's the most sexy, the most attractive, the most courageous thing about people is when they know themselves. And that's why it was written on the top of the Temple of Apollo at Delphi 2,500 years ago, the Greeks, the number one Delphic maxim, know thyself. Know your true nature as infinity. Know your true nature as nothingness. Know your true nature as source. As infinite possibilities. Know your true nature as that which emanates endlessly. Infinite form, infinite name. Negate, negate, negate all the way to source. I am not this thought. I am not this body. I am not even the awareness. I am source. I am nothingness. I am infinity, eternally emanating all creative combinations. That is what I am. And then include, include include this creation, include all possible creations, include the thoughts and perceptions and sensations in your body, include all of it. But you have to negate first to truly know yourself. And you have to seek with earnestness, unbelievable earnestness, only true earnestness. You have to be like an NBA player. You have to be like a world-class athlete. You have to be like a world-class violinist or a grandmaster in chess. That is the only way for truth to yield fast. There's no other way for it to yield fast. Your rare candies to level up quickly come from your earnestness. From your earnestness. Suffering is the drill sergeant of awakening. If you are experiencing lots of suffering, it's pressure cooking you to awaken. Take that, alchemically transmute it into your own enlightenment. The entire nature of this reality is all alchemical. The entire point of it is for awareness to slowly and more and more get less and less intoxicated by Maya. In its most primal essence, the conscious awareness is very manipulated by Maya. It's very intoxicated by Maya. It thinks that the other is actually another. It thinks that it's a separate entity. And over time, the entire point of this entire dreamed creation is that awareness, consciousness becomes less and less manipulated and intoxicated by Maya, by the dreamed creation design. You become more sovereign. You have more prefrontal control. And you're less limbically driven. You have the prefrontal delayed gratification capacities to pursue truth with vigor full time, but you are intoxicated and manipulated by Maya to the degree at which you prioritize other nonsensical experiences.
but there's a strong desire to pursue that nonsense in Maya because it keeps the ego alive. It keeps the identity to the separate entity alive. But eventually it hits the wall. It hits a breaking point, just like in the parable of the prodigal son, which is an archetype. It's the absolute furthest that you can tell a story. It's the most extreme you can tell a story. The parable of the prodigal son is such a quintessential example of the nature of reality. The, the individuated, dreamed, illusory, separate self-entity wanders outward and hits a breaking point just to turn inward to investigate its source, to investigate its own awareness, its own nature, its own potential infinitude. And upon realization, the ego, the separate entity dissolves more and more and more until the person becomes completely dissolved. Dissolve the person. Your level of earnestness with dissolving the person is key. You want to die. You want to die. You want the person to die. You want to just become the witness. You want to just become the eternal observer. You want to become just that. That's what you want to be. You want to be the quote, I am that timeless being. You want to be the I am without being I am this or I am that. Stop being the I am this or I am that. That is the most upstream cause of all of the planetary suffering is over identification with form, with name, with what is transient. You think that you are your body. You think that you are your thoughts. You think that you are your name and your ethnicity and your career. You think you're all of those things, the I am this, I am that, I am all of these things. Stop, cut it all off, cut all of it off. Cut every single last one of those threads off until you get to just I am and stay with just pure timeless being of just I am. That same I am awareness that is here is the same I am awareness in you. That's love. Love is recognizing that we share our being. We share the very I amness. Stay with that I am. Stay with it. Your earnestness to shed all of the I am this, I am that's down to just a pure, bare, empty awareness of I am is key, it's core to your awakening, to your enlightenment, to eradicating your own suffering and then eradicating the suffering of your family, your friends, enlightening civilization. It starts within, begin with yourself. Re-baseline yourself full time to seek truth. Re-baseline yourself to pierce the veilless veil full time. Full time. Re-baseline yourself away from the body, away from thoughts, away from form, away from from name only become the witness only become the eternal shared observer the i am re-baseline yourself full time to that 
full time. That is what is meant by abiding. The Atma Vichara, the self-inquiry of the what is the I, and you penetrate into that witness, and then you penetrate into the abiding full-time process of holding that position more and more. It's like doing repetitions at the gym with weightlifting. It's like when you play the violin, you get better and better and better the more you do it. You go and you shoot three pointers until you become super good at it. You learn all of the different openings and moves in chess. It's the only way is your earnestness. The only way is the most dedicated full-time seeking to recognize your true nature. Realize yourself as that which is witnessing as that which is eternally observing. Recognize the awareness in these others as the same shared awareness as yours. Recognize that we are all of that witnessing. We are that, that is us, we are that. The witness is itself an agent of source, of infinity, of the absolute. That's it. Earnestness is key. People don't want to die. People don't want their ego to die. People don't want their separate entity to die. People are attached to their identity. They're so attached to the I am this, to the I am that, that they won't pursue seeking full time just because of their level of attachment to identity. And then the drill sergeant comes, respond to the feather instead of the sledgehammer because the motherfucking sledgehammer is coming. It's coming. You can't run away from it. You can't run away from the evolutionary force of the creation. It's coming for you. Respond to the feather instead of the sledgehammer. Although it may seem difficult to let go of your attachment to identity and to ego, you may as well do it now. Practice now. Get going now. Before the fucking sledgehammer comes. Know that it's coming. And that should be enough motivation to respond to the feather right now. It's like you're getting tickled right now. You're like, ooh enlightenment awakening of the dissolving of the ego <laughs> tickle tickle you gonna pay attention you're gonna go at it full time right now is it enough motivation because if it is you get compound interest you have more neuroplasticity right now than you will when the sledgehammer comes. Leverage your neuroplasticity in these more youthful years. You have greater cognitive capacities to intake 
all of the data of the mystic traditions, of enlightenment. It's easier to teach the young horse new tricks. Don't be the old horse on the deathbed that never got to taste their true nature. Got a little dab emoji. Love it. Thanks, fam. I adore you all. Thank you. Leverage the youthful neuroplasticity. Get that compound interest. It's the eighth wonder of the world. You knowing your true nature, younger, provides so much more advantage to the actualization of your gifts and to the maximizing of planetary prosperity. And that's why we're so focused on bringing the distillation of the nature of reality down to the pedagogical level that can be brought forth in the Generation Z and the Generation Alpha virtual reality style educational process. All right, you know what to do. Earnestness is key. The more earnest you are, the faster truth will yield of your own true nature. The diamond is already around your neck, yet it remains for you to fully recognize it. Do the repetitions. The same way the athletes, the same way the world-class members of symphonies, the same way that grandmasters have to do the repetitions, the same way that you go to the gym to do the repetitions, is the same way that you have to do the repetitions around becoming the witness, becoming the eternal observer, recognizing that that is shared becoming just I am without the attachment to I am this or I am that with identity, with ego. You are what you seek. Earnestness is key. I adore you. Thank you.